so geofencing is the idea that you can draw an invisible fence around a piece of property, you know, around a piece of real estate, like Stanford, for example. Um, and as you cross that geofence, your phone says, you know, it can give you a notification, can simply change its display, can switch your social feeds, you know, because you're arriving at work from personal to professional, although some people may want to go the other way. Um, you know, those sort of things, because you actually cross that geofence. The concept that the phone is aware of your location is only so valuable. It's more what that location, the context of that location, that's, that's more important. And so, um, yeah, I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a coffee company that we probably have all heard of. Uh, I, I'll use one that we've all heard of, my apologies. Um, you know, uh, something to do with pirates and Starbucks and all that sort of stuff. And what the, the question that we wanted to be able to solve, not for them specifically, but for, for any old coffee company is, how do you offer coffee as a service, as a subscription service? How do you, how do you say, you know, using my fictitious, you know, Starbucks coffee name, go into a Starbucks, have my coffee be there when I get there, not have to give them my name, not have to wait in line, hand, uh, have them hand it to me while it is hot, and have me be able to turn around and, and walk away so I could start spilling it on my shirt. Um, well, in order to do that, the phone is the intermediary. The phone knows that you're 10 minutes away. Now would be a good time to go and tell the establishment that the, you know, Joe, whatever my fictitious name is, uh, wants his, whatever, triple decaf, half latte, wood pine thing. Um, and when I walk in, proximity, you know, another geofence is set closer, another geofence is set closer, and the increasing reliability by which the coffee shop can actually go and say that Joe is going to show up and pick up his coffee, that, that reliability increases to the point that there is Joe. He's walking in the front door. Oh, his picture, maybe I have a relationship with Starbucks. You know, his picture shows up. Oh, you're Joe. Here's your coffee. We'll take it off your credit card. Thank you so much, because I've identified you. And the phone has become this, this trusted, useful intermediary between me and a coffee shop in order for them to be able to hand me a hot cup of coffee. Now, there are many other practical things that will keep that from happening. I'll get the half decaf double, but whatever. Um, the point is, is that if we have the concept of geofences, that means that, that as a phone gets closer to something, it is able to go and, you know, uh, trigger events based upon context. I think it also brings me to the next topic, because if we can solve the privacy, privacy and identity problem and take that off the table, and let's say we can for a second, I'm hopeful we can, I think then the ability to innovate is just unbridled. We have incredible opportunities. And what we think about with mobile and what we're thinking about with our clients every day is how do we change behavior? That's the holy grail, right? How do we take this device and really shift somebody's behavior in a good way in an outcome that's good for them and the company? So I'll give you a couple examples. We're involved with a few of these projects. Um, Vitality's the glow cap. You've probably heard of that. It was launched on the AT&T network. Very simple pill reminder. The cap lights up or glows when you're supposed to take your medicine. Just that simple implementation took adherence, which on average in this country is 70%. So 30% of people don't take their medicines when they should. That costs us $290 billion as a country. Um, took that from 70% to 96% in their trial. So just that simple implementation. But there's more we can do, right? We can go to much more personalized interventions and coaching. We work with a company called WellDoc you may be familiar with. Um, WellDoc was one of the early pioneers in diabetes coaching. It was actually founded by some folks that saw a woman collapse in an airport who was an insulin-dependent diabetic. Um, they were able to talk to her afterwards and, and ask, you know, why did this happen? How many times does it happen? And she was embarrassed to say three times in that month she had collapsed because she fell out of balance. And they said that should never happen, right, when we have one of these with us all the time. And so instead of going and hire a bunch of developers, they hired a bunch of cognitive psychologists to think about how do we change behavior, and then let's figure out what kind of program we need to go do that. And after 
six year, long years of educating the FDA. They're the first FDA-approved mobile app for disease management. The reality is we can see Siri as a voice agent. Um, behind the scenes, what Siri is is a behavior change tool. And Apple is trying to learn your behaviors through the queries and interactions that you have with your device. That's exactly why they, they want to have Siri as that interface. You can learn incredible amounts about people. So if I'm, you know, if it's Wednesday and the market dropped 150 points, my phone might say, well, you called your stockbroker last week when the market dropped 150 points. Do you want to call them again? Or you just drove by your health club um, and you worked out three days ago. Do you want to go in there and work out today? So this notion of learning your life, which once again gets back to this benefit versus privacy equation, is very much part of it. And of course, um, we need the cloud to make all this happen. If we really want to do some of these very cool use cases, the data has to work together. And that means not only cloud, but this notion of big data and analytics and marrying up slow moving and fast moving data. So if I'm a patient and my doctor uh, just released me and I just had knee surgery, and let's say I'm a little overweight um, and he's put me on a therapy that involves certain types of exercises, medications, and he wants to track my weight and blood pressure and heart rate, well, maybe I'm going to use my Connect system to make sure I'm doing the therapy right or even sell, send him a film of am I tracking right in terms of the movements I'm making with my knee. Maybe I'm going to use Nike Plus to track my walks and runs to show the activity level that I'm exercising. Or I might have a Withing scale or a, blood, a glucose cuff and a blood pressure cuff to to upload all my information to make sure that data is available to my doctor to show that I'm on track. And I might even want to share it socially with my friend, my wife, my caregiver to make sure they know I'm on track. I can't do that today very easily because my health data lives in some vault and my activity data lives in some vault, my social data lives in some vault. I need to bring that together in a way that I control it. And we're still getting there, but there's a, there's a huge opportunity to bring this data together. 